Hey, I'm Ashley. My first semester of college is over. I go to Minerva University and I'm gonna talk about it. I'm gonna talk about a general overview of my expectations and how Minerva uh, met or did not meet those expectations as well as the good, the bad, and the ugly. So I have my laptop here. I have some notes written down just to make sure I get through everything. First of all, my expectations for Minerva. So I thought Minerva would be kind of like, yes, theory. Um, it was one of the reasons why I actually wanted to go to Minerva in the first place, and there were definitely moments of that. But it's not to the scale that I'd hoped for, because you have so much work to do. Like, it's a lot of work, really. I was expecting travel and adventure. In some ways, I got that. In other ways, I just, you know, didn't have time to do that. It is a lot more mundane than I think they advertise it to be. Next thing, so I went to LMU in like Los Angeles, Southern California over Thanksgiving break to visit my friends. And here are some observations I made. I personally would be much more culturally comfortable in a traditional US college such as LMU. And also Minerva is so much harder, both in terms of living and in terms of academics. Going to LMU made me realize that traditional colleges were kind of like an all-inclusive resort. In some ways, it kind of is. So you have like all the restaurants and dining halls on campus, nice views, a shuttle bus to bring you downtown, loads of amenities, gyms, libraries, really nice foliage. I think Southern California is just helping with that, with all the palm trees and whatnot. And it makes you feel really safe and really secure. Um, Minerva doesn't give you that feeling. We have no dining halls, we don't have a gym, we don't have a library. It's just it's just different and you like you have to cook and stuff. So it's more taking care of yourself. So that's um, one part of it. Another thing that I was kind of surprised, confused about was um, the demographic of Minerva and how their academics come into play. Minerva attracts a pretty interesting demographic one of which being people who spend their time doing things outside of academics. That's the whole point. That means these people, and myself included, are not used to spending all their time on school or academics. But I feel like the expectation of Minerva, if you want like a good GPA, is to spend a lot of time on academics. I thought because Minerva knew and like they're trying to attract this type of people that aren't spending all their time on academics, they would give you more time and space to do your own thing, work on personal projects, whatever. Um, they don't really do that. I personally wanted more time to work on like side projects or do other things and explore, and I didn't get that in my first semester. Now moving on to probably a highly anticipated part, the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good. Compared to most US universities, for my first year and first semester being like core curriculum uh, type things, it's pretty dense and much more difficult than the core curriculum of other universities. And there are higher expectations regarding grading too. The second thing, professors are by and large really good. Um, classes are great. I love the class style. I love that you do have to pay attention and you're kind of forced to learn. Like you have to learn things. Professors are pretty accessible outside of class. Classes are so small that you kind of get to know your professors. Third thing, no class signups. So I have a lot of friends in traditional US-based colleges and they're all playing the Hunger Games really. I'm like, you pay for this school, you pay for an education and now you're playing the Hunger Games. Like you have to fight for it to get the education that you paid 80k a year for that I don't know that doesn't make sense to me and at Minerva so far I haven't had to do that because everyone takes the same classes finally the ratio of people who are chill and like will talk to you are pretty high like people get along here okay we are back my my legs my feet ankles started hurting because I was kneeling and sitting on my knees the bad probably a pretty anticipated like, I'm guessing segment. First of all, there is bureaucracy. I expected a lot less bureaucracy for a school like 
Minerva for being so like startup like and being like oh we listen to your voices oh we're so cool we're so new we, we're so innovative yeah whatever um there's still bureaucracy some of the school administration just isn't it i think that's true for a lot of schools and school administration by and large needs to change but Minerva's administration, you'd think they'd be different. I don't think so. In some aspects, Minerva is run like an NGO, and I don't love that. Also, adding on to the bureaucracy, I'd say most people, like most students at Minerva, are pretty untraditional, so I don't think it makes a lot of sense for them to do a lot of these ceremonial things they made us do in the first week. I don't know. We're just not into like sitting there and clapping and watching people go up and second thing your gpa at minerva will probably be a lot lower than it would be at a traditional u.s school so they grade pretty harshly in the sense that not everybody gets a's all the time um like other schools i personally don't see that as an issue but i can see a world in which it could be bad if you would like to go to graduate school or like maintain your a certain GPA. Grade inflation really isn't a thing here, so that could be a disadvantage, but it is definitely possible to get a very high GPA as long as you're willing to put the time in to learn material. Third thing, our dorms. Um, so my class is the biggest class at Minerva so far and they're trying to expand class sizes, but in my current dorm, I live with about a hundred other students, also freshmen, um, and we have one kitchen. And that one kitchen has eight stoves. It's not a very big kitchen. We have eight stoves and like three sinks. It's kind of nasty and because we don't have dining halls, we all have to cook. It's not a great situation and I think they could in improve in terms of like giving us more room to cook or like having a kitchen for each floor or something like that so the kitchen's less nasty. Also, um, I share a bathroom with like seven or eight people and that one bathroom has one shower, one toilet, and one sink. So sometimes um, you're gonna have to wait. That's kind of annoying, but it's livable. Fourth thing, back to academics, English is super easy. I asked about this and it's because everyone comes from a different English background. Some people have never done English academically, so they they dumb the English course, which is MC50, Multimodal Communications, really low, that's what it feels like. The first half of the semester, we were just basically learning how to construct a paragraph things that I learned in like ninth grade that's what it feels like it was very easy for me I also came from academic English background from an American school so that probably helped a lot I just felt really bored in that class it was very easy not very challenging fifth thing that I find not necessarily bad but just kind of dumb is that we have this course called global learning and it kind of makes sense because like, oh, you know, you're exploring a new city, whatnot. Um, that part of it makes sense, but there are th things about global learning that really don't make sense, like assignments that are really just time wasting and you have to be like, oh, what's like, what culture shock have you had in the past couple weeks? And for me, that's like, little to none because I think growing up in Hong Kong and going to an American school like there's not a lot to do in that course and it's like monthly or something but you know I just I just didn't find it necessary really finally Minerva has these things called legacies I'd compare them to like houses of different schools or like some sort of like team spirit type thing but it really doesn't work at Minerva I'm not sure why they're trying to do it. First of all, it's very ceremonial and I'd say most of Minerva is not very ceremonial because of how untraditional the nature of the school is attracting a lot of untraditional people. I don't think legacies work because there isn't really like a competition or anything. It's just a group of people and 
that you like hang out with from time to time at school events. It doesn't mean very much. Um, I think it's nice to have a different group of friends, but I feel like they could either be doing more or not have it, and it wouldn't really change the Minerva experience. And finally, the ugly. I'm gonna preface this with like, the ugly is mainly draws back to bureaucracy and administration, and I think bureaucracy and administration in a lot of institutions, um, higher education or not, is not great. In Minerva's case, the first thing that I find problem with is Minerva going to lengths to save money. This kind of ties back into the Minerva runs itself like a nonprofit. So I don't know if they're thinking correctly about like long term future growth. One of the examples I have is that they don't have school cameras for events or anything, which is super weird to me. Like Minerva, clearly they're like really into marketing. They have to market, but they don't have like a camera. I was an event photographer and I had to bring my own camera. I've never taken photos at an event for free and not have them provide any of the tools I need, which one of them is the camera or like the SD cards, things like that. The second thing is how Minerva talks about like you talking about the school. I know on YouTube there's a lot of people with concerns being like, hey, your school just paid you or whatever to say for you to say all this stuff. And it's like, no. But something that really struck me while reading the handbook, it's all like fine print and stuff. So it's not, I don't know if it's that important, but I read the fine print. I don't know if this normal for other schools, but it was basically like, if you're approached by a journalist or have to have like a formal interview about Minerva, you should talk to our PR person. This is the contact. And I just, it just doesn't sit right to me. I feel like the good, the bad, and the ugly should be discussed. I think this is once again Minerva being a new school. They're trying to build their reputation, but I, I feel like that type of handbook advice can get problematic. So yeah, overall, um, I think Minerva is a good school, but it has its flaws and um, I'm probably going to make more of these videos because I think these videos were really helpful when I was a high school senior applying and researching about colleges. I feel like I have good insight into um, traditional U.S. colleges as well as Minerva, so I'm going to talk more about my experience soon. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. See you next time. Bye!